This is part two of our top 50, where we will be going over our top 25. If you have not seen part one of our top 50 coasters yet, I recommend checking that one out first before watching this one. The link is in the description of this video. You could watch them out of order if you wanted to, it really doesn't matter. But if you're wanting to know what our preferences were, we discussed that in part one, so you can see how these rankings are laid out. Without further ado, let's get into it. Ryan, number 25, what we got? Diamondback at Kings Island, my favorite coaster there. Wasn't expecting it to be, but it turned out to be. It is my favorite B&M Hyper due to how sustained every airtime hill is. And I love the second half more than quite a few other B&M Hypers. Let's just start off with the drop. It's the best drop I've experienced on a B&M Hyper. And the two Camelbacks are amazing. Hammerhead turnaround's great. And then the hill with the trim brake. If you don't get the trim brake, then it's straight ejector. When you do get the trim brake, it's still amazing floater. Good positives in the helix. Mid course doesn't really trim too harshly, at least when I wrote it. Then you get some more doses of floater airtime and then a pull out out of the helix into the splashdown, which which is great. If you reach your arm back in the back row of the train, you'll get a dose of water splashed into that arm. All in all, it's a smooth, enjoyable coaster with loads of floater airtime. My number 25, Ryan's gonna hit me for this one because this was unfortunately closed for him, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. Up until this past June, this was the coaster that I had ridden with the strongest airtime. Triple Camelback has great ejector, the barrel roll down drop is unique, and there's no dead elements on this ride. That's why I prefer to Steel Vengeance, although maybe if I got some better rides on Steel Vengeance, I might like it better than Twisted Timbers, but not sure if that would be the case or not. Too bad a certain other coaster in the same park exist because that one overshadowed with the timbers but i don't think it's any worse regardless number 24 is top thrill dragster at cedar point i got to ride it two times once in 2019 once in 2021 first ever ride i rode in the second row there was no one in front of me and i was by myself so missed a great opportunity there and the second ride i had was in row five this ride's all about the launch pretty sure it's my second favorite launch i've ever experienced first time i rode it i actually blacked out on the launch which is crazy because i've never experienced anything like that i just love how fast it is and how tall it is. It's a great 17 seconds of a ride time. It's super thrilling. And I love that you get the bleachers next to it to watch that launch go off. All in all, it's a great ride. Number 24 is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. If you want a smooth coaster, look no further than this awesome BNM Hyper. In fact, I would say it is the best one I've ridden and it's not exactly close. The airtime on this thing is unbelievable. Some of the most sustained airtime of any coaster. Smoothest coaster in Florida, that's for sure. I rode it in 2021, which is five years after it first opened and I didn't notice any rattle of whatsoever, not even the slightest bit. I hope it stays that way for many more years to come. Besides the airtime, the soundtrack is incredible. One of my favorite soundtracks of any coaster, including the soundtrack you hear on the lift hill, which really added to the ride for me, and also the station and area of music is also exceptional. Some people have called it make overrated. I don't feel that way at all. I think it's really good ride. Too bad that some other coasters open in Orlando because this thing seems to be a bit overshadowed nowadays, but I feel like it's still an absolutely incredible coaster. Even though I haven't been to SeaWorld Orlando since 2021, I feel like it'll still remain my top coaster there next time I go back. My number 23 is Twisted Cycle clone at Six Flags over Georgia. Small but very punchy ride. RMC hybrid conversion opened in 2018. I got two rides on this once in row 15 and once in row 16. Crowds were pretty bad when I was there so that's all I can judge it off of. Amazing ejector filled layout with strong inversions with the reverse cobra roll and then the wave turn that's probably one of my favorite wave turns I've experienced. Every single hill delivers. Pre-lift is fun and I just like how punchy the elements are. Only problem is the length of it, but it can look past that for a good layout. I don't think I had any new for 2023 coasters on my first half of my top 50, but the first one debuts at number 23, Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey Park. Some may call this the best ride at Hershey Park. While I can understand why, I think it's second. It's got an awesome first drop. The world's largest step up under flip is certainly a unique element, although I will say it's one of the weaker elements on the ride because everything else is so good. The stall is fabulous. It's got a great ejector hill. I think the best part of the ride is the very last inversion. A lot of people say the inversion before it's better. I like the very last one better. It reminded me of the Zero G roll on Twisted Colossus, and that's not a bad thing because that inversion is incredible. It's really well paced, got two awesome wave turns. I have no complaints about it. Overall, Wildcat Revenge, very solid ride, and I can see how anyone would have this other top coaster in Pennsylvania. 22 is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Since Accelerator was closed when I was there, this was by far the best coaster there. CCI redone by GCI, and it did wonders for it. First half isn't anything to write home about. The first Camelback's pretty good, and the laterals are decent in the first half and then the second drop previously had a mid course there but now it doesn't break at all it made that drop a whole lot better i think every single hill after that is ejector airtime which is crazy to find on a wooden coaster the laterals on the final helix were elite and it was very smooth for a wooden coaster it actually is my favorite cci that i've ever ridden i got eight rides on it when i was there so i got a really good feel for it and i loved it number 22 we are going to the coaster that made me an enthusiast screaming eagle at six flags st louis 
it's been running a bit on the rougher side, especially in 2023, but when it's running great, it's fabulous. Great air time, great sense of speed out in the woods. The drop off the trend next to the Boston Lit Hill is ridiculous in the back row. I think it might be the best now at six flags and low since between that or another because we will be getting to later on, but it's easily top two. Every time I ride Scrim and Eagle, I just have a blast on it, but the fact of the matter is there are some coaches ahead of it that pull stronger forces, and that's why I have it ranked at number 22 and not higher. Number 21 is Hingdaka at Six Flags Great Adventure. The tallest roller coaster in the world and the fastest one in North America. I've heard that this thing was rough compared to Top Throw Dragster, but I couldn't disagree more. I think they're about the exact same smoothness. The launch was a lot better. It had multiple kicks when I was riding it. Each felt stronger than the last. I thought this top hat was a little bit better than the one on Top Throw Dragster because I went over it faster. And then the airtime hill at the end actually gave a really good dose of floater airtime that was very sustained. That's why I like it more than Top Throw Dragster. It is my brother's favorite roller coaster. Barely missing the top 20 for me is Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. One of the most, if not the most unique coaster on my top 50. This is the only mock extreme spinner in the US and it's by far the best I've ridden by mock rides and I don't know if anything else will be able to top it anytime soon. Great drop out of the station. One of the most demonic elements of any coaster, especially in the back row, it's just demented. Great inversions. Uh, zero G roll in particular stands out, especially if you're taking it not facing the track. You do get some decent airtime moments like the drop out of the station can give some airtime and especially the bunny hill before the second launch. That can give some good airtime as well. The 95 foot tall loop is definitely an inversion, not saying it's bad or anything. I mean, there's no bad elements on the ride, but it's still a fun inversion. The launches do have some decent kick to them, especially the second one because it's a rolling launch. Time Traveler, fun ride, but it's not even close to my top ride at Silver Dollar City. Number 20 is Storm Runner at Hershey Park, my favorite intimate accelerator. I like this one more than King Ka because it has an extended layout. I like length. The launch was very punchy and it's my third favorite launch behind the two Stratas. The top hat gave me like four seconds of ejector airtime and it was a very good drop. The first inversion isn't anything special and then you pop into the Flying Snake Dive, which is my favorite inversion of all time. The ejector going into it and loads of whip coming out of it. And then you have those lateral transitions into the final breaks. I very much appreciate that it is a smooth coaster and I got to experience, I'm pretty sure it was the day it opened in 2021. My number 20 is a coaster that I bet a lot of people have in their top five. Air Force One at Fun Spot Atlanta. This placement is strictly a personal preferences thing because this coaster is packed with airtime, but if you saw part one, then you might've noticed that I mentioned that airtime isn't a huge priority for me. And that is the main reason why I don't rank Air Force One quite as high. However, if I did like airtime as much as other people do, it would easily be top five for me at the least. Then again, I can respect anyone who has it as their top RMC because I think some people do have it there. First drop is solid. The arcade roll is my favorite part of the ride. The stall, despite being the longest, isn't quite my favorite, but it's still really good. The quad down is a little bit too much, but it's still really good. The best outer bank I've experienced on any RMC, yes, even over the hyper hybrids. And then the double up is solid and overall an absolute powerhouse of an RMC and definitely my top coaster in Georgia. My number 19 is Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. I know a lot of people that would have this a lot lower than I do, but I just love ejector airtime and this thing's packed full of it. Even the second half is packed full of it, unlike Jersey Devil. This thing ran a whole lot better, a little smoother, and a lot faster than Jersey Devil, and that's why I rank it so much higher. There was ejector airtime on every hill. I got to ride it in the front row and the back row, and personally, I think the back row is the best because that first drop is amazing. And the inversions are great, the whippy zero G roll, the stall is great, and I just love how fast paced it is and how it doesn't stop until you hit the final breaks. Number 19, we are going back to Hershey Park for my top coaster there, and it is Storm Runner. This intimate accelerator coaster I knew going in would be my favorite ride at Hershey Park. It has an awesome launch, which I don't know if it's top five favorites for me, but if not, then it's certainly up there. Best layout of any intimate accelerator, that's for sure. The top hat was pretty good. The Cobra Loop is interesting. Flying Snake Dive is fun, but the highlight for me is definitely that launch. And also, who doesn't love the audio clip that played right before it? I mean, it's legendary. Definitely my favorite at Hershey Park. And Sky Rush, I mentioned this in part one, but that was one of the first coaches that just missed my top 50 because it was too much for me in terms of forces and the restraints were bad. Storm Runner, absolutely incredible ride. And I would say it's underrated at Hershey Park. Number 18 for me is X2 at Six Flags Matching Mountain. I did not think I was going to like this because I really dislike the 40 free spins. That being said, I liked how the flipping wasn't as forceful. It was more gradual flipping. I got two rides on this, once in the back row, once in the front row at night. My front row at night was probably one of my favorite coaster rides I've ever had. After I hit the final break run, I was laughing for a straight minute because of how crazy that ride is. One of my favorite first drops of any coaster. With the way you flip face on the ground, it feels a lot similar to Falcon's Fury. And then you pull out right as you go right side up again. I did 
didn't think it was as rough as I thought it was going to be, which is a very big plus for me. Still not smooth in the slightest, but it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Final Raven Turn is one of my favorite elements as well. I love the intensity of it and the whip you get flinging back into the final break run. All in all, I thought this was, I was going to say underrated, but a lot of people like it, but it is not my favorite coaster at that park. Let's go to Dollywood for my second favorite coaster there. Given my preferences for launches, I feel like it shouldn't come across as too much of a surprise to people that Big Bear Mountain, their new for 2023 Vacoma multi-launch family coaster, lands at number 18. This thing, I've always said, is a next level cheetah hunt. It has some awesome launches, although I will say I feel like the best launch on Big Bear might not be as good as the best launch on cheetah hunt, but the sense of speed is top notch, smoothest Vacoma I've ever been on, but then again, I've only been on a couple new gen Vacomas, which I think it's only that in Dragonflyer, maybe Freedom Flyer, I don't know if you count that or not. Big Bear is remarkably smooth, although I don't know if it's quite as smooth as Mako, but it's still really close. The main reason why this ranks over Airy Force is because of the on-ride soundtrack. That, for me, really makes that ride. If it didn't have the on-ride soundtrack, I'd have it ranked somewhere around where Cheetah Hunt is, which was close to my top 25, but didn't quite make it. Soundtrack is remarkable and really gets you hyped up. I mean, it's such a vibe. The launches, they were intense, especially the last one. There are some decent air to moments. Only, like, there's one overbank in the second half that threw me out of my seat on my first ride, and I didn't expect it, so that was a nice surprise. There's also some decent positives in the second half, which I wasn't expecting. This thing, I would consider to be a sleeper hit. Very solid number two at Dollywood, but it's not even close to one. My number 17 is Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. This was 30 spots lower before this year. I got two middle row rides in 2019, and I just thought it was all right. It wasn't one of my favorites. It was just okay. Then I rode it probably like 20 times this year over my three visits, and it really climbed up in my rankings from then. Finally got some back row rides on it, and I really love the first drop, how it punches you out of your seat, and then you get great positives on the way down. You get a different ride every single time because of the spinning cars, which is great. My favorite spinning coaster by a long shot. I got one night ride back in December where the car was spinning over the entire Twisted Camelback, and oh my gosh, that ejector airtime while you're spinning is ridiculous. The zero G roll afterwards was spinning as well, and that's even crazier. Then you get that dose of ejector right before the second launch, and if you're in the back row, it kind of accelerates a little bit while you're still out of your seat, which is a crazy experience that everyone needs to have at some point. Then the final overbank turn hangs you out to the side, which is amazing. And then you hit this final brakes and it says dream big and do good. I love the theming of this thing as well. I'm very satisfied that a roller coaster has like a hundred foot drop out of the station. You don't get that very often and it's extremely smooth. Here comes another launch coaster taking my number 17 spot. This is actually my first one, Thunderbird at Holiday World. This is the coaster that sparked my preferences for launches, seeing as I just said it was my first one. Despite having ridden multiple launches since then, this is still one of the best I've experienced. It's so punchy and this thing continues to impress me every single year. And I've ridden it every year since it first opened in 2015, which I think is pretty cool. Super intense, especially in 2022 and 2023. It's felt like a BNM invert almost with how intense it was running. Like my legs are going so numb on each of the valleys and I'm like, why is this thing running so intense? I swear it didn't start running like that until 2022, which I don't know what the deal is here, but Thunderbird, it's amazing. Great launch, Illman is intense, Vertical Loop, stupid intense. The valleys before and after the overbanks are intense as well. The zero jewels, not the most intense element, but still a fun experience. The Twisted Hill gives a little bit of air time, but not that much. And then the near miss of the barn at the end is phenomenal. A lot of people tend to rank Thunderbird at number four at Holiday World because the wind coasters there are insane, but it's definitely my number two in the park. And no matter how many coasters I ride, Thunderbird will always rank near the top of my list. And this is no exception to that. Number 16 is Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. The only Chance Hyper GTX in the world currently. I know they're building a new one in Mattel Adventure Park called Twin Mill Racers and the prototype they got right and that doesn't happen a lot on prototypes. Every single hill gave strong ejector airtime, basically RMC trains with a different facade. There is a coaster in the same park which have the same restraints but a little bit better. These come down on your legs a bit more than some of the RMCs that I've been on. It makes up for it on tossing you out of your seat by the intensity and it's only like 100 feet tall which is crazy. Good laterals from those transitions at the end and it has an unbelievable finale with those three camelbacks ejecting you on your seat over and over again. Number 16 is Mr. Freeze at Six Flags St. Louis. I briefly discussed the one at Six Flags over Texas and pretty much everything I said about that one can apply to this one. Stupid intense, very consistent ride experience. I would say it's the most consistent coaster at our park by a decent margin. It's very close to being my new favorite coaster in the park, although I can't quite put it up there. It's a lot closer now than it was at the start of the year. One thing we did not mention is that if you get a rollback in the very back row or front row if you're riding over Texas in the forward train, you get some unbelievable hang time. That is the best hang time Ryan and I personally have ever experienced. And it was insane because we got four seconds of hang Upside time. Upside down, 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, we were literally stopped at the very top of the inverted top hat. The sense of speed on the return trip is downright insane, and the trip out is wild. Overall, you can't go wrong with Mr. Freeze, and I can respect anyone who has it as their favorite coaster at Six Flags St. Louis. Number 15 is Copperhead Strike. This is the most underrated coaster I've ever ridden. Going in, I thought it would be maybe top 50, but all of the airtime moments were crazy. There's three moments of floater, and then all the rest is ejector. The only bad part about it is the launches, which aren't anything to write home about. They're not forceful at all. The hang time on the first vertical loop is amazing. The ejector hill after is elite. The transitions are whippy. That stangle dive is amazing with the ejector you get over it. And that final hill always pops you out of your seat. And I love how comfortable the restraints are in the trains and how smooth it is. Number 15 is Maverick at Cedar Point. This is one of the most consistent coasters I've ever ridden, much like Mr. Freeze, as I've never walked off disappointed. It's also one of the most complete coasters I've ever ridden, as it has everything a good lab needs. Awesome beyond vertical drop, multiple great airtime moments, two good inversions, an awesome launch, which is especially insane at night because you feel like you're launching into a black hole. The single dives are fun, rapid transitions are great. A lot of people say Maverick is the best coaster of Cedar Point, even over Steel Vengeance, which even though it's not my personal favorite, I do think it's better than Steel Vengeance, although my rise on Steel Vengeance weren't as good, but that was discussed more in part one. Maverick, I don't have any complaints about it. It's a jack of all trades, and it's an easy choice to put high on this list. Number 14 is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. My favorite Morgan coaster. First half, good first drop with the laterals on it, and then the second drop, you just plummet into that ravine, and it feels like it never ends. Could use a bit more airtime on that drop, but what makes this very high is the finale, which is one of my favorite coaster finales. Six or seven moments of ejector airtime that launch you out of your seat over and over again. My favorite moment of that finale is that double down, and then the double up into the final breaks is amazing as well. I was lucky to get four rides on this because my day at Kennywood got cut short by rain. I'm appreciative that it is so smooth as well. Number 14 is a coaster that I wish I could rank higher, but I just can't do it for right now. This is Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. It was my 200th coaster, and I was lucky to get two rides on this during my one day in August of 2021. The park was extremely packed. Even with Fastlane, I wasn't able to get all the credits, and I-305, despite that, had a 90-minute wait all day, despite having two trains running. That's unheard of for that ride, and that ultimately is why I could only get two rides on it. That being said, this thing is still a blast. The sense of speed on it is up there with Millennium Force, although I think Millennium Force does it a little bit better than that. The first turn, it definitely caused me to gray out. The rapid transitions that this ride had are insane, and I can respect anyone who has it in their top 10, if not higher, but based on my experience, I can only rank it at number 14, but I feel like it has a lot of room to move up in the future. Number 13 is an odd pick, Joker at Six Flags to Savory Kingdom, fourth RMC that I ever rode. I was very impressed by how good the airtime was on it. Doesn't have a lot of moments, but all of them are amazing. Ejector airtime on every single moment. The underflip was great. The stall was great. I think this is my favorite pre-lift section of any RMC. I got five rides on this, and every single one thoroughly impressed me. Number 13 is one of the biggest surprises I've ever had with any coaster, Mamba at Worlds of Fun. In part one, I mentioned that Steel Force paled in comparison to another coaster. Mamba is that other coaster, because the first half was really good, but the mid-course being off for me made that second half so much better. I first rode this in 2022, and the mid-course brake run had been deactivated not long before I rode it. I was getting so much airtime on the finale, and I didn't have much of a chance to land back in my seat, because right when I landed back in my seat, I got shot out of my seat again. Night rides on Mamba are underrated. A lot of people talk about Prowler's Night Ride, and for good reason, but I think Mamba does it a little better. Both are really good night rides. Mamba is definitely my favorite coaster at Worlds is Fun, and surprised me way more than just about any coaster ever has. My number 12 is Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This was the first coaster that I ended up marathoning, because I liked it so much. The forecast said it was going to rain, but then it didn't, so we didn't get a whole lot of crowds on that second day, so we marathoned it 10 times in a row. Every single ride was amazing. First drop is elite. All b and Giga coasters have a great first drop. I liked the turnaround, how fast it was. And then the speed hill is probably my favorite moment of this ride. You get a lateral snap with a dose of ejector airtime. Then you have the camelback, which is just as good, if not better, than Mako's five-second floater hill. The hammerhead turn is great. And then you get another low-to-the-ground turn that showcases its speed off. Another camelback, which pretty much every time I rode this, the uh, trim was turned off. So it just flew over the hill like crazy. Then you have that final turn, then the last pop of airtime into the brakes. It could be a little longer, but it is a sufficient length, and I love how smooth it is. Number 12 is Boss at Six Flags St. Louis. This is a polarizing coaster among enthusiasts, as several people love it and others hate it. I'm definitely one that loves it, although I can understand why people hate it. If you ride in the back of the train, it's not smooth. And actually, I could really say that about any row besides the front, because I've ridden multiple different rows, not just the front and back, and I've always found the front to be smoother. When the Boss runs good, it's excellent. You got a phenomenal sense of speed, great airtime,
time. Ridiculous pacing, especially in the first half. And I will admit the second half is a bit lackluster at times because of the mid-course break run, but it hasn't been as hard over the past few years as it was after they removed the Helix in 2018. This is barely my top coaster at Six Flags and Lifts because of how inconsistent it ran in 2023. And I've never seen it run inconsistent before. Because of how inconsistent it is, I'm debating putting Mr. Freeze ahead of it. But I just can't quite do that for right now because every time I'm debating moving Freeze over Boss, I always get some of the most ridiculous rides on Boss and it convinces me to keep it at the top spot for now. And also the Nairid on Boss is phenomenal. Definitely top two Nairids at Six Flags St. Louis along with Scram and Eagle, but I can't decide which one I like better. I will not be happy if this thing is RMC though, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens in not so just in future. Number 11 is Railblazer at California's Great America. I'm pretty sure this was the only poster that really impressed Alan Shilke when he first wrote it. I was too. Tons of intensity. Cartoonishly fast pacing. Some of the strongest airtime of any roller coaster in the entire world. I just wish it was a little longer, but if it was a little longer, that pacing wouldn't be the level it is. Amazing first drop. Probably my favorite dive loop of all time. And then the twisted airtime hill, which is, I think, my second favorite airtime moment of all time. Ridiculous. Drop off the turnaround. Cut back is good. Zero G roll is flowy. And then that overbank turn up into the brakes is ridiculous as well. I can't say anything bad about this coaster. It had a tiny bit of a rattle, but it wasn't very noticeable. We rode it five times and we were lucky to get that because it was so crowded that day. It really knocked my socks off and that's why I like it so much. Number 11 is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. I really like Mamba, but it's no match for this Morgan Hyper. The sense of speed on Phantom's Revenge is unbelievable. I think I said this after my first ever ride that it felt like a strata coaster almost with how fast it was running in. The low to the ground moments that this ride had really showcased the speed. The airtime on it is insane. I do wish it was a little bit longer of a ride because it feels a little bit on the shorter side. Other than that, I have no complaints about it. I rode three times in the front, once in the back. Front was definitely better because I felt the sense of speed to be much better up there and I found the airtime to be better in the front as well. Although a lot of you may disagree with me on that. Phantom's Revenge, definitely my top coaster in the state of Pennsylvania. Now we get into the top 10. Kicking off the list is Maverick at Cedar Point. This was my number one for a very short instance. I was blown away about the first drop on this, the quick lateral transitions in the first half, that ridiculous ejector hill, the horseshoe roll wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Still a great element. Then the best element of the ride, in my opinion, is that tunnel launch. It's a very punchy launch. Then you get some trim brakes, and then they remove that hardline roll, which I think could have made it even better. <laughs> then you have two stangle dives, which are equally as good. I think the second one, personally, is my favorite. Another ejector hill, and then you slam into the final brakes. Very well-paced attraction. Pretty smooth. Great sense of speed all around. Perfect 100-foot coaster. I feel like this one's gonna cost a debate. My number 10, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. This, up until recently, was my favorite RMC, but I've ridden a few other since that I found to be better. If you ride it in the morning, you're gonna come off disappointed. I'm gonna tell you that much. I rode it first thing in the morning, front row. It didn't do it for me. I was disappointed. But then I rode the back like 15 minutes later and it was much better. You don't want to judge Iron Gwazi based on morning rides. Any other time of day besides the morning, it'll be ridiculous. First drop is my favorite first drop I've experienced, even over El Toro and Sky Rush. Death roll is really good. It really felt more like a faster version of the barrel roll down drop than a crazy airtime moment, in my opinion. The wave turn could have been better, but the second half is where you get a lot of your airtime. I got a front row rain ride and a back row night ride. And both of those were the best rides I had on Iron Gwazi, and those are what solidified in my top 10. If you have this on your number one spot, I don't blame you. My number nine is Theory 325. A lot of people have this in their top three. I don't because of my personal preferences, and I only got two rides on it. This coaster has one of the greatest sense of speeds out there. I'm not into that. I'm into more airtime, and it does have six really good airtime moments. First drop is one of the best. Not my favorite giga drop, but we'll get to that later. The first turnaround, good. And then you get those two low to the ground turns, which showcase the speed. People sometimes say they give airtime. They didn't really give any airtime to me. The treble clef was probably my favorite element of the ride because of how strong and sustained that airtime was coming off of it. The only dead element was the helix. It's okay, but it's not anything to write home about. And then my second favorite part is that finale with those two camelbacks and then the pop into the final break run. One of the smoothest coasters ever. I just wish I got more rides on it. My number nine, we're going to another BM Giga, Orion at King's Island. By far the best ride at King's Island, and it's not even a close fight. Great sense of speed, although I will say I feel like it's the weakest of all the Gigas I've ridden, but then again, there are a lot more elements that are higher off the ground rather than staying low to the ground, but it still has some great moments. The speed hill is exceptional. The twisted hill before the final breaks gives some good air time. The same can be said about the first drop. Trim kill back could be better, but then again, it's because of the trim break up there. And the wave turn, it's hit or miss. Sometimes I get something out of it, sometimes I don't. And the helix, which I think is nicknamed Orion's Belt, is pretty forceful. This past summer, I got that ride completion at King's Island. I got an ride on all the major coasts there. And Orion, believe it or not, has a favorite night ride in the park. A lot of people say Beast is the best night ride, which I can respect it, but I just loved Orion's night ride because you take a coaster that's themed to outer space travel and you basically get that in real life with the night ride in the front row, which I had 
had that happen. It was just unbelievable. This thing is better than I feel like a lot of people give it credit for. A lot of people were wishing for a better version of another coaster that I'll be getting into in just a second here. But I think Orion is just as good and I feel like he doesn't deserve the hate against. Number eight is Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. One of my favorite RMCs. I rode this thing 38 times in the two days I was at Kentucky Kingdom. Couldn't get enough of it. Rode in every single row. Every single airtime hill is ridiculous. I marathoned this thing 20 times in a row. A lot of people think that would be too much, but I couldn't get enough of it. Barrel down drop. Absolutely love that element. Strong pull out into that ridiculously sustained ejector hill. Great over banks, which pop you out of your seat. And those two twisted hills are awesome as well. Another over bank. And then the strongest camelback of the ride. And then a flowy zero G roll. And then the trick track double up, which I absolutely love. Then the double down for the best airtime moments that I've experienced because it's four back to back airtime moments. And then the funky ending, the helix with the overbank that's weirdly profiled. And then you get another pop of ejector mixed with laterals going into the final breaks, which is amazing. Very smooth ride and very well paced. Definitely my favorite in Kentucky. My number eight is Fury 325 at Carowinds. I don't know why, but I feel like it didn't pack as much of a punch in 2023 as it did in 2022. Obviously it's still in my top 10, so I really like the ride. Great sense of speed. Obviously we know for the crack support incident that happened back in June, but thankfully I rode it before that happened. First drop is decent, although I do prefer Orion's first drop by a pretty significant margin, even though I did ride both of them in the back row. The treble cuff is good. The helix, Ryan said he didn't enjoy the helix so much. I didn't think it was bad, honestly. I think I might've gotten a little bit of head chopper if I remember correctly. Oh, there's one. Airtime towards the end is good, but Fury is definitely a speed machine. Whereas uh, one airtime, I would say you got better options to care ones like Copperhead Strike or Intimidator. Fury 3 to 5 was my top BNM originally, but like I said, my rides in 2023 felt like it didn't have as much of a punch as 2022. That's why I moved it down a couple spots, but still top 10 worthy. So 10 out of 10 ride regardless. Number seven is El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. One that I thought would be my second favorite coaster, but it turned out not to be. First third of this ride is one of my favorite sequences of elements ever. Has my favorite element ever, which is that double camelback. My favorite airtime moment on the planet. So sustained and so forceful. The first drop is in my top five, but it's definitely not my favorite drop. I thought it was a bit overrated. And then the middle section was a dud. Had some floater airtime and lost some pacing. Then the rolling thunder hill wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be either. Still a good dose of ejector, but not as some people make it out to be. Then you have those lateral transitions leading up into the final floater hills. It picks it back up in the last third of the ride because the second third is a dud and the first and third are amazing. The other thing I could say is that it was rough. It was pretty rough when I wrote it. Back in 2021, I'm pretty sure I wrote this two weeks before its accident and the jackhammering was pretty good. It was not the most pleasant experience to ride this in the back row. I preferred the front. Should have done second to back. I did do second oh, to did? back and it still was pretty yeah, bad. Was if this was smoother, then it would probably rank two or three spots higher, but the roughness killed it a little bit. If you saw the video that Ryan Ellis and I made of our top 10 coasters in Missouri, I teased that one of those coasters broke into my top 10, but I wasn't going to say where it ranked yet. I'm going to reveal that spot right now. Number seven is Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. I stupidly did not put this on the video of 10 Surprises and Disappointments because it broke into my top 10, so I should have included it. At least as an honorable mention, but I didn't. I got 20 rides on it in July. Oh my gosh, was I amazed by how well I was running. So much power on every single hill, and there are no dead elements on the ride. The first drop, one of the best ever. The double barrel roll is exceptional with great hang time, although I do prefer Mr. Freeze's and Bird Top Hat with the rollback that have better hang time in my opinion. Wave turn is phenomenal. Might be my favorite wave turn I've experienced. The first inversion is weird. Probably the weakest element on the ride because everything else is just so good and there's multiple different bunny hills that give some of the strongest objective air time I've experienced. The overbank under the lift hill is phenomenal and this is my new number two night ride. This thing is a powerhouse. You can't get much better than this RMC topper track wind coaster and it's by far the best coaster in all of Missouri. Don't see anything else beating that. Even if there's some giga that's built, I don't think it'll beat out La Run, honestly, because this thing is just so good. Now, if only it was a little bit longer, that's the only nitpick I have, but I would rather have a much shorter ride with no dead elements and a longer ride with elements that don't deliver. My number six is Outlaw Run, Silver Dollar City. Not even a close contest to this being my favorite coaster in Missouri. This is also the coaster that got me into being an enthusiast and my first RMC. That probably solidified RMC as my favorite company because of that, and I don't think any of their rides are bad. This one in particular is my third favorite RMC. It has, I think, the best first drop of any RMC I've been on. The first element on the front row, you get popped out of your seat a little bit and then you get whipped to the side and back. It's a really weird looking inversion from off-ride and on-ride. This is one of the most intense wooden coasters you'll ever ride. Non-stop from start to finish. Some of the strongest ejector airtime on any wooden coaster or any coaster for that matter. The twisted 
hill, then the speed hill, and then the overbank turn, which actually gives some great air time coming out of it. My favorite wave turn of all time, then another speed hill into one of my favorite finales, a uh, double barrel at the end. The first one's whippy, and the second one provides hang time, which is a great contrast to end out an amazing wind coaster. A little bit short, but oh man, it packs such a punch that I love it so much. It is the coaster outside my home park that I have ridden the most. One more thing to mention about Ella Run, and I mentioned this about Goliath. Rain rides on that thing are just wild, but you do run the rest of the ride overshooting the brakes, which oh, uh, yeah. I've never seen it happen, but Ryan said he saw it. I saw it happen. Event. That's something to watch out for. Number six. This was my top coaster in Florida until fairly recently. Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This was ranked up at number two last year, but I'm starting to think to myself, do I really like Velocicoaster as much as I say I do? Do the preferences that I like most about a coaster apply best to Velocicoaster? And my answer, I think it's no. So that's why I moved it down a few spots. Still, this thing is a work of art from start to finish. Basically, if you take Maverick and add better theming to it, you get Velocicoaster because it does almost everything better than Maverick. Although I will say the second launch on Maverick, I do prefer the second launch on Velocicoaster. The Mosasaurus roll is one of the best elements of all time. Best inversion on the planet, and it's not even a close fight for me. Second half is good. The off-axis hill gives some decent airtime, and I would say it's more lateral heavy than airtime heavy. First half, running through the Raptor paddock was really cool and provides some good head choppers. First launch is underrated. Way more intense than I was expecting it to be. Top hat was pretty good. Then again, I didn't feel right about ranking it up at number two because my preferences, there were some other coasters that did it better. In fact, there's one in the same park that I found did it better, and you probably know which one it is by now. Like I said about Iron Guazi, if anyone has this at the number one, I can totally understand it because it's phenomenal in every single way. You can't get much more perfect from a layout's perspective. My number five is another underrated coaster, Twisted Colossus and Magic Mountain. I got to ride this thing 20 times. I marathoned it eight times, but I was there for three days. No dead elements on it. I got to duel half the time, which I was very happy about. I don't really care about dueling the other train, but in this instance, it makes the experience a little bit better, but not a night and day difference like people make it out to be. First drop is amazing. One of the best speed hills on any roller coaster. Every single ejector hill on that is amazing, especially the drop off the blue turnaround, the hill under the Top Gun stall. The zero G roll on Twisted Colossus is the whippiest one I've ever experienced on any RMC. Then you get off axis hills here and there. And the green side has that amazing Top Gun stall and another great dose of ejector airtime with that double down coming off that turnaround. The only dead spot is going up the green lift hill, but that differentiates it from one half to the other half, which I don't mind. It's a very smooth ride and my favorite coaster in California. Number five. This coaster is probably not going to remain as high next time I get on it. This is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This is by far the best ride at Dollywood. Yes, over Thunderhead, which that was in part one. It doesn't even make the top three there, but it's very solid number four. This RMC was my first one. I actually got lucky and rode it 2016 first try. I didn't remember anything about it. And I went seven years between rides. And I finally got back on it back in June. And I got multiple rides, including a rollback. It was insane. The launch, it was awesome. And the first drop I thought was kind of underwhelming, but that was the only part of the ride I was disappointed about. The wave turn, it was really good. The twist and shot elements were insane. The quad down is airtime nirvana. And the last turn is underrated. It packed a lot more positive Gs than I thought it would. I don't have any complaints about landing rod other than the fact that I wish that it was more reliable, but they're removing the launch, which that's why it's not as safe at my number five spot, because I feel like it could slip a little bit if I ride it without the launch, but I'll judge that once I get that experience. But as of now, landing rod is top five worthy, and I'm thankful I got to ride it with its launch multiple times before it got changed. My number four is Sky Rush at Hershey Park, my favorite coaster in Pennsylvania by quite a large margin. It is one of the most intense coasters I have ever ridden with its slamming positives and ridiculous ejector airtime. My favorite first drop of any coaster with that insane snap right before you get slammed by positives. Then you have one of the best ejector airtime hills on the planet, one of the strongest turns of any coaster. Then you have another ejector hill just like the previous one, more slamming positives with the next turn. Then you get a stangle dive, which is almost as intense as the one on Maverick. Then you have the lateral ejector hill and then the twisted hill, which is ridiculous. One last ridiculous ejector hill and then it finally coasts into the brakes. That's the only part that it slows down. I have no problems with the restraints, even though I thought I would. Somehow, I was very lucky with my four rides on it. I never got stapled on it. When they were resting on my legs, they didn't hurt me at all. The same cannot be said for my brother or a number of other people, but I think the restraints aren't as bad as people make them out to be. My number four coaster can be found just across the lake from Velocicoaster, and it is the Incredible Hulk coaster. Talk about a ride that is carried by its on-ride soundtrack. This is my favorite on-ride soundtrack by a long shot, even over Big Bear Mountains, and it really amplified Hulk's sense of speed and intensity, which Hulk is definitely the most intense
intense coaster I've ever ridden, even more than Intimidator 305. Each of the inversions are super intense, and the zero G roll, Cobra roll, and first corkscrew are my favorites of those inversion types. The zero G roll actually is my favorite airtime moment as well, because the sustained upside down airtime I got going through it. Left outside seat in the front row with what an extra clear room is downright insane. Not to mention that I got two Zen rides on Hulk and Velocicoaster, and on my second Zen ride on Hulk, I was quiet the whole time and listened to the soundtrack, and I feel like I was in heaven when hearing that. The intensity is just so high, it makes you feel like you're about to crash into a wall with how well it's paced, and you can run so fast through the first half that it can overspeed and come to a dead stop on the mid-course, and that happened to me twice out of my 39 rides back in June of 2022. I was genuinely sad after my last ride on Hulk because it was so much fun, I couldn't get enough of it. It's definitely my top coaster in Florida, although I can respect anyone who has Velocicoaster ahead of me, but I felt like Hulk showcased my preferences better than Velocicoaster did, even though I feel like Hulk's incline launch isn't quite as good as Velocicoaster's second launch, but still. Incredible Hulk coaster, top b and and I miss that ride. Number three is Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. Since Twisted Timbers was closed, this is where I spent the majority of my time. Wrote it 15 times, eight times in a row. This was my most anticipated coaster in America ever since I got on a different one. It did not disappoint. Got to experience it in the front and the back. My preference is the back. It's my favorite drop on any Giga because of the steepness of it and the cable lift makes going over that drop so much faster. The blackout turn. Every single time it made me gray out except for once. Then the airtime hill after the sustained ejector which is amazing and then the lateral snap into the speed hill gives a great dose of airtime slash laterals. And then my favorite point in the ride are those lateral snaps. Middle one's okay but the first and the last one are ridiculous. And then the trim brake which wasn't hitting very hard when I was riding it. So both of the last two camelbacks were flow ejector slash ejector airtime. And then the final snap is ridiculous. Then the snap into the brakes is the strongest snap I've ever felt into any brake run. Not the smoothest Intamin coaster but it's still remarkably smooth considering what it is. I don't have any complaints with it. It is the most intense coaster I've ridden. I don't blame anyone for having this as the best coaster in America. For my number three, it is the coaster that I was mainly questioning whether I like Velocicoaster more than. It's actually right here. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. This is by far the best of fun coaster I've ridden. The hydraulic launch was absolutely insane. Best element I had experienced at the time when I rode it in July of 2021 and I got seven rides on it, all of which were in the very front. Two of them were the very first and very last train of my last full day of 2021. It was nerve wracking to sail on that launch track here in the engine revving and all of a sudden you're shooting off down the launch track. Well, let me just say, the nat ride on it, oh man, the bugs were real. It was an absolute ride. By far my favorite coaster is Cedar Point and I have very high expectations for Top Thrill 2 if I ever get on it, which hopefully I'll be doing that in the next couple years. It's got some very tough competition if it wants to be the original, but it'll be tough. Best one trick pony of any coaster, I would say. Although actually now that I think about it, there was one very similar to it that I've ranked higher and I don't know if I consider that a one trick pony or not. Top of those racks was a rush and I miss it. My number two is the Voyage at Holiday World. This destroys any other Woody with its pacing, its length, its airtime, its laterals, its quick transitions, and of course, the best night ride of any coaster anywhere in the world. I've ridden it 24 times now. Every single time it knocks my socks off. I had this coaster at number one after I rode it at Hollywood Night 2021. The airtime was crazy. My favorite moment of the ride is the double down in the spaghetti bowl section. Those last three ejector hills at the end of the ride are easily as good as well. Never loses its speed. Those 90 degree bank turns are great. I can't say enough about it. It's just that good. And I'm so glad that it's only located three hours away from us. My number two is King Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. Basically take everything I just said about Dragster and improve upon it. I think it has a better launch. I know that's controversial, but I did feel that extra eight miles an hour. I'd say King Ka might not be a one trick pony because it does have the airtime hill, which I found some airtime, although not a ton of it. And it was better than the straight track that Dragster ended out with. I was at Holiday World back in June in line for the legend. I heard King Ka's launch cable snap. And I'm like, oh no, I might not get to ride it. But it reopened, I think not even a week before I went to Great Adventure. So I barely made it. If that was closed, that would hurt because that was my top US bucket list coaster ever since I rode Dragster and it did not disappoint. That launch, best element I've ever experienced. Absolute insane rush. Uh, I got three rides on it. Sure, the restraints aren't as good, but they're not a deal breaker for me because the ride experience is just phenomenal. Tallest coaster in the world for now. Fastest in the US. Overall, a really good ride. Best steel coaster I've been on and it's not even close. My number one, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. It's lost a lot of its mojo lately, but I still think it's the best coaster I've ever ridden. It's the only roller coaster that I've come off speechless after my first ride. Even though it was in row six, I still came off speechless because of how good it was. Smoothness is on par with Mako. It's the smoothest coaster out there. Airtime is ridiculous. Every single moment is ejector. Every single ride I've had on it, completely trimless. No slowing down at all. It's euphoric every time I ride it. Like, I can hear the ecstasy of gold every single time I go on this thing, and it's ridiculous. First drop is one of the best I've experienced.
experience. Speed Hill is the only dead element for me on the whole entire ride. The top hat is one of my favorites. The outer bank, solid flow ejector airtime over the whole thing. And then the step up into one of the best zero G rolls on the planet. Overbank and then that lateral snap stall with a pop of airtime in between it is ridiculous as well. Step down, then a step up, and then a step into the mid course. I've never experienced it when the mid course is trimming, so I wouldn't know how bad the second half is when the mid course hits. When it doesn't hit, every single hill's ejector, the wave turn is ridiculous, and my favorite finale of all time with those six airtime hills. I just want to ride it over and over again. Sufficient length, it's my favorite thing ever. But I'm going to Florida in May, so my number one might be in jeopardy. Finally, still holding on to my number one spot after all the coasters I rode in 2023. Voyage at Holiday World. I'm not judging it based on how it runs during Hollywood Nights. I need to clarify that. I ran with the mid-course trim really hard and without the mid-course trimming, and I don't know as much of a difference. Sense of speed is the best of any wind coaster I've been on. Steel Vengeance maybe advertised had the most airtime of any coaster, but I still get way more airtime out of Voyage than I do on Steel Vengeance, but then again, my rise of Steel Vengeance was up par. I gained a new appreciation for the Twisted Hill over the Lift Hill in 2023 because that shocked me, especially over Labor Day. I didn't expect the airtime to be as strong, and it was mind-blowing. Spaghetti Bowl throws you all over the place with a mixture of airtime, laterals, and just an overall out-of-control feeling. And then the Night Ride is the best of any coaster, and it's not even close. Although, like I said, I'm not judging it based on the Night Ride. During the day, it's still the number one I've ever ridden, and it's not even close by. The reason why I have Voyage ranked over Dragster and Kingdom Ka, even though it's nowhere near as fast, is because the sense of speed lasts for such a long period of time, whereas Kingdom Ka and Dragster were over in a flash, while Voyage lasts forever. The return trip back to the station feels like you're defining the laws of physics with how you pick up speed, and there's one crazy airtime moment with intensity after another. It's so insane. Every time I ride Voyage, I'm wondering how this thing is allowed to exist, and it'll be very tough to beat, that's for sure. That wraps up our top 50 lists. That was part two. So if you have not seen part one yet, I recommend checking that out to see what because we had ranked below our top 25 and uh, it'll be interesting to see how these lists change for next year so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the like button if you haven't done so already we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 which i think is a pretty ambitious goal but i'm starting to get there so if you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so and i don't know if we clarified this or not but even though there were some controversial opinions on this list all we ask is that you respect our opinions even if you disagree we thank you guys again for watching this two-part series we'll see you later